Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, you might have already seen a video in which I have spoken about my bass flute and um, yeah, I, I introduced this instrument and I spoke um, a bit about the range and how tips on how to play it. But um, something which I didn't really talk about were the extended techniques that uh, you can perform on this instrument. And um, there have been, I have done videos before on extended techniques for the flutes, um, but, uh, but like uh, separated videos. But this will be just one long video with several extended techniques. So without further ado, um, the, the bass flute is an instrument which is part, as you know, is part of the flute family and it does have a much larger um, body than the flute. So a technique which can work really well, which can be very uh, resonant, are for example key clicks. So they are, it's a technique which does work very well. Percussive techniques usually do work very well with, um, on the bass flute. So key clicks is definitely one. It's a technique which is quite quiet, very quiet actually. Um, it's usually, it does have a percussive effect. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, basically, there aren't that many things to say about key clicks. Um, this is how it's usually notated. I'll put an example here. Um, but, and it doesn't differ so much. It doesn't really differ from the flute. It's just, there was something that I did mention in the other video though, in the, when I spoke just about key clicks, is that there is a sound going down and sometimes when the keys are bouncing back up. Though, so it's, it's something that can be, um, you, if you, do, you just want one sound, um, you have to be a bit careful just to, and then to not raise them. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so that's something which you could be, uh, you could take care. Uh, however, if you're playing with a large ensemble and you're just doing kicks like, key clicks like that, which is usually the effect it's used for, um, it's not something really to worry about. Another uh, technique which works extremely well on the bass flute is um, tongue ram. Now, I love this extended technique on the bass flute. It really um, does resonate very well. It is a technique that you would perform it as you would on the flute. So it's the, the same, um, the same, you perform it the same way. Uh, so you, a large quantity of air and then you stop it with your tongue at the embouchure hole. Uh, there is a better explanation on the other video on extended techniques. Um, but, what happened, the thing is, with the flute, when the tongue ram will always, the sound, the sound will always sound, uh, I believe, on the flute. So on the flute, it sounds a major seventh lower than the fingered notes, but on the bass flute, it sounds a major seventh lower. So that's something uh, very important for composers to know, um, that the sounding note will always be a uh, major seventh lower. And I am talking about, actually, this is also important to mention, uh, in this video, all of this information is going to be uh, for a bass flute with a C foot. My bass flute doesn't have a B foot. And also for bass flute with closed holes. There are some bass flutes with open holes, but um, uh, mine isn't the case. So, uh, so yeah, that's tongue round. Flutter tongue is also an extended technique which you would produce as you would on the flute. It works very well on the bass flute too. Uh, and I use the flat tongue with the tip of the tongue. I find it much easier. Some people use, I think it's, it can either be called a uvular flat tongue or glottal flat tongue. It's with the back, like with the throat or the back of the tongue. One thing to note um, for composers, it is harder to produce, um, at least I find it harder to produce a flutter tongue in the lower register of the bass flute. But it's a very, um, it's a really interesting technique to change. Um, yeah, it's a, it, it produces a very interesting effect. 
I spoke about tongue rams, I spoke about key clicks, and another percussive effect is the pizzicato. Now this is another this is a technique which also works very well with uh, the bass flute. It's also you would also produce it the same way you would as with the flute, but since it has a larger resonating body, um, like the tongue ram and uh, key clicks, it's a technique which does work. I find better on the on the bass flute than on the normal C flute, and, and, and even better than on the piccolo. There's also the jet whistle, um, which you would also produce as you would on the flute. This is how it's usually notated. Um, since the bass flute does need more air than the flutes, I do find this um, technique much, not that much harder, but a bit harder on the bass flute to produce. Um, it's a technique which doesn't last very long and it needs a lot of air. Um, and I guess, yeah, that's the, mo the main things that composers should note for, for this technique. And just a quick message, uh, if you guys do want to support my work, I do have a Patreon channel now. It's a very, very, um, I really enjoy the community that I have there and it's really great, a great way to talk to you guys. Um, so yeah, do check that out. I'll put the link somewhere around here. And another technique which I hadn't spoken about, which is actually my favorite technique, are harmonics. So I really love doing harmonics and it's a very, it's it's a technique which you can be so creative with it because you can link um, if you want a really percussive effect and overblowing effect. Uh, it's very. It's, I find it really interesting to write that for the bass flute or even for the normal flute um, because when you overblow and if you have a really like uh, I like an attacking percussive sound, it can have you can have lovely harmonics and it's um, it, it sounds really cool. I think. So it's um yeah it's something that um I find it very interesting and I love uh playing it it just gives such a great timbre um this is how it's usually notated and uh yeah it's a really fun technique now, uh, techniques which might seem a bit limited if you compare them to the flute um, are multiphonics. And because since the bass flute does not have open holes, at least not this one, uh, it limits it a lot. It limits um, in terms of fingerings. There's not as many uh, as there are for the open hole C flute. And actually, same with uh, glissando, because we can do... Um, and, and also same with microtones, actually. Um, so there are, I mean, there is, um, you can still do multiphonics, glissando um, and uh, microtones. You can perform microtones with the bass flute, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just a bit limited, but there is a, you, you can find fingerings for that. Um. <laughs> Um, so with the glissando, since you can't do a glissando with um, the keys, um, it would be more with the head joint. Just by turning the head joint. That's how the, you'd, you'd perform a glissando with this flute at least. There are also air sounds or aeolian sounds. Um, which you would also play it as you would on the flute. So very relaxed embouchure, just blowing over the embouchure hole. Uh, 
Um, it's a very quiet extended technique, once again, as you can probably realize. Uh, so it's uh, but it still does give a very interesting effect. I think those are all the extended techniques I wanted to talk about. Um, and this video is already quite long. It's been recording for 16 minutes, almost 17. Um, if there are any which I have missed, I'm sure there there are. I can do a I can do a part two video. Uh, so just leave down in the comment section below which uh, techniques which I might have missed. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I will probably upload a video with the auto flute next and its extended techniques. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you on my next video. There are also air sounds or 